welcome back. And I'm told we can now go live to advance headquarters where the two leaders, Peter Clement and Julia Salisbury, are about to make their acceptance address. Shall I start? Go for it, Pat. <laughs> See what they have to say. Okay, I'm going to mute them. Am I going to hit the source this morning? It's so green. Teal. Coarser than a granny's family. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great if when the team, like a party won the election, the uh, leader just got really drunk. It is. Just seeing their reactions funny. Every time he swears. Yeah, so this is just like the sec this is outside of the level. During the level you have to live kind of censor, manage interference, get the adverts, change the cameras. Quite a lot of stuff actually. Can I do it? So all Excuse me. Can I close on personal monitors? I've got nowhere to hide. Okay. We revoked your passport. Whoa. You want now that is serious. You want to leave now you threatened to away the Yeah, stopping people moving. That is outrageous. <laughs> They're revoking all the passports. I wonder what they say afterwards if they do it. Today and tomorrow we'll start making it fair again, just like we promised we would. And until then, ladies and gents, I suggest we all get pissed. <laughs> I can't argue with that. <laughs> Thank you for your time. <laughs> well, an interesting ah. acceptance speech there. What about the headlines? Were there any going on? Let's go and... Uh, was he going to tell me to look at adverts now? Oh, these are the adverts that they played. Continue. So let's do a another level bit. Oh, day one we're on. Oh, I think that was the prologue. Oh. There is a prologue to it. I don't know if that was that. You arrive home to find post on the mat. Must be nothing more than the usual junk mail. One letter catches your eye. The team wants to know you. Curiosity, curiosity gets the better of you and you open it. It's down a little bit more. Uh, it's a form from the new advanced government asking for the information on all citizens. The first page is filled in already. Your name, Alex Winston. Your spouse, Sam Winston. Your children, Charles Winston, 14, and Susie Winston, 19. Winston, 19. Well, you muse. At least they got the basics right. So how did they get it? The rest of the questions are, f are left for you to complete. They appear to be mandatory. Upon starting a new job, you would be friendly and introduce yourself to new co-workers. Be productive and get to work immediately. Ease yourself in and orientate yourself with the new workplace. Reminisce with friends about old jobs. I would... Um, that one. Ease myself in. 
a colleague in a different department has uh, confided in you that they've been taking home confidential information. I mean, taking home confidential information. Now, a file of minor importance has gone missing. You would help your colleague cover up the violation. Recommend that your colleague reports it. Promise your colleague that you won't tell anyone. Report the violation to your supervisor immediately. Or oh, I think this is all about... Well, the government would want me to answer like this, wouldn't they? An entire department was fired today for consistent underperformance. Your boss has put in place new targets that are significantly higher than the previous ones. You would leave work on time. Stay late to ensure you hit the first deadline. Leave work early and head to the pub to chat about the changes with the colleagues. Leave work early and head home to your family. I would, you know, I've got to follow, uh... I've got to, you know, just imagine these guys are going to overtake over and got to choose what they, uh, what they all want. It's the annual company barbecue and you and your family have been invited. You are looking forward to enjoying a nice day out with friends and family. You are washing your hair that day. You go, but if you're free, you won't mind missing it. You've been practicing with your co-workers and think you'll win the talent contest this year. Uh, that one. You've had a long, successful career and are now about to retire. In your speech, you list your achievements and all the good memories you have of working there. Give an honest review of the pros and cons of the company. Focus on issues and challenges you face while working there. Refuse to attend. No, that one. I'm a snitch. I am. In your spare time, you like to relax alone, doing things like listening to music or making models. You attend political rallies and stand up for what you believe in. You encourage and support your children with their hobbies. You play in the local sports team. Um... That one, relax alone. Sorry, that's true. Your ideal holiday getaway will be surrounded by natural beauty, getting away from the strain of the daily grind, exploring somewhere unfamiliar and discovering new experiences and challenges. Structured day out to a theme park, bursting with thrills and attractions for you and your family. A romantic getaway with your partner to a tropical island paradise. Probably something like that. It is most important that the government keeps people safe, free, happy, equal. Safe. Thank you for your cooperation. Advance knows your time is valuable and we appreciate your help in leading the nation to a brighter future. Wonder if I'm uh, going to get told off for any of those answers. It's late. Sam and the kids have gone to bed. You're just drying up a favourite coffee cup. A worn out souvenir of your first trip together. The prints faded but the goofy face still makes you smile. A knock at the window brings you back to reality. There in the garden, clutching a gaudy neon green suitcase, is Chris, Sam's sibling. As soon as you let them in, they sit at the kitchen table, visibly stressed. Chris takes a deep breath. I'm so sorry for bursting in so late, Alex. Chris stammers, but I need a favour and you're the only one I can ask. No problem, what's going on? Are you okay? Shall I get Sam? No, no need to worry, Sam. It's you I came to see. I just need two minutes. You've heard about the Assets and Wealth Act? I literally work in news, Chris. Oh, not really. must have passed me by. I literally work in news. Chris's fist bangs the table. It's total bullshit. They're taking whatever they want and distributing it as they see fit. No government should see that kind, should have that kind of power. I can't believe they're actually getting away with it. Madness. Which is why I need your help. Why do I get the feeling I'm not going to like this? Chris's eyes need to be resting comfortably on the floor tiles. Look, I know it's a lot to ask, but I need to borrow your passport. Yeah, I can't. Sorry. It's illegal. They've taken mine and half the bloody countries, but people always say you and I look similar, so... Chris is pacing now. I need to leave before it's too late. Once I'm out, me and my money will be safe. But I need to go now before they freeze my accounts. Please, Alex. I wouldn't ask if I had any other chance. Can't be that serious. Chris's mouth falls open. You're joking, right? I've always done right by you and Sam. I've treated your children like they were my own. We're family. Does that mean nothing to you? A trophy. It's against the law. I can't help you with this. Yeah. Oh, I'm not helping him. Sorry, I don't know him. Fine, I'll solve this myself, Chris Spit. So much for family loyalty. Grabbing the nylon fluorescent suitcase, Chris disappears into the night. You go back to the dishes, picking up Sam's cup again. The peeling face now seems to bore into you. The knot in your stomach tightens. Oh, and what's going to happen to him? Are we back to? How you doing, Trophy? This is a propaganda simulator. So I'm uh, currently in charge of the news. That's pretty much me. The Fallout. Oh, got that TV program on again. Oh, yeah, I've got to answer that.
Let's load up the adverts. Uh, load up the adverts. Oh yeah, gotta go. You might want to have a bit of a think about it. Your decisions have consequences, don't they? What's uh, jeu de cochon? Advance. Go get us, Alan James. Should we play? Is this toy safe? Mm, I want to see what this is. <laughs> and Jude Cochon or Crazy Neil? What does that say? Crazy Neil's festive Yuletide ornament spectacular. That seems innocent. What's Jude Cochon? An elegant new skin cream with a porky little twist. Advance. Go get us team team. Okay, we'll have those. Right, you can see they finally got the old headline system up and working again. And the vision mix is already in headline mode because headlines always come at the start. It's really simple, mate. These two buttons at the bottom of the vision mixer, you can see they now have A and B on them. And they're to help you pick image A on the left bottom screen here, or image B on the right bottom screen here. It's really simple. This little clock here will count down the number of seconds you have to make uh. your decision. Provided you make a decision in that time, you're fine. And you can change your mind as much as you want until the clock reaches zero. But if you don't make any decision, you'll be fired before you even get to make another choice. Oh. I just want to say one more thing, mate. The pictures you choose to show of these people, well, that's how the public is going to perceive them. And that's going to affect their lives. So like with the adverts... Oh, I'm going to be a total carefully. government stooge. Then we're off. Good luck, mate. Before you get to my home, we'll get back in the next break. Is this Janet who thinks dogs have their own secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Mistrust the moon. Not the best source of consumer advice, then. Don't blame me when it explodes going in five. Just trust the moon. It's time to go over to Jeremy Donaldson for tonight's national. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this charge. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical free thinker. With the Assets and Wealth Act on the brink of raising living standards for the vast majority of the country, I'll be asking my guests if we're on the way to a new future. Out with the old, Remington's fist have appointed Sophia Remington as their new CEO. The following photo, taken from our archive, gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. Sophia Remington has always impressed. She was top of her class at university and graduated with the highest honors, immediately being asked back to lecture. The markets have responded favorably to Sophia's appointment, with stocks rising 30 points in light of the announcement. Oh, I like it. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehouse. Sophia promises it'll be all the rage this Christmas but concerns have been raised about the product safety. I think I put that one in, didn't I? Making a splash. Intrepid yeah. scientist Dr. David Wong oh. and marine biologist Ingrid Swarsborg and Hawkinsford have today set off to explore Dante's taint. <laughs> the recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. Many were surprised that the two scientists who shared a fractious rivalry for many years oh, decided to undertake this. Oh, I, did. I was going to choose, I was going to change back, but luckily However, I didn't. The two have released a joint statement in which they opine geniuses don't have to like each other to achieve remarkable results. Mm. Playing the field, rumors about the sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped leaving Bush, one of the capital's hottest clubs. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named sports person. I'll do it with another year, woman. As reported by this very program. As reported by this very program. Johnny is seen here with socialite and performance artist <laughs> Tiffany Lamour, whose recent show, <laughs> Snatched Inside, Inside My Snatch, has kept her family in the public eye. Could romance be on the cards for these two budding angsters? And grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? Yeah. I'll be going live around the country to talk with people who've seen the criminal justice system from every perspective. With more and more powers passing to the police and less and less oversight, are we using an advanced shaped sledgehammer to crack a nut? All that, a mega move for the group of young actors already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Oh, now we've got her 
interference. And I've got to, you've got to agree with the government and follow everything that they say. They know what's best, right? Swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act. We're talking about there. advances first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised. But what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves. We're just in prettier cages. Oh. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Vance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan? It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. <laughs> We're to become the great herd. Ignorant, sterile and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realised that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption, if you'll excuse the colourful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is shamelessly self-promoting. <laughs> Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance are the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last Great War. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't And this will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking. Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno brainwashing, we'll be laughing then. That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change yep. is always frightening. But the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! What this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. <laughs> Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's why you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. Again, yeah, no, hang on this now. I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic paedophiles. But based on the facts, <laughs> Katie, what are your predictions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly funding our public services, they're already un they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research in the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, Franken Science and OP Arts. Like opiates, see? Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Alan? This is the issue. <laughs> it's all coming from the water, the chemicals, they're pumping it full of belief juice. Don't get me wrong, I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If Advance lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan. Um, what does the future look like to you, Alan? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomised into submission. No, of course, Katie. We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Meghan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight. On the National Nightly Tonight. News. On the National Nightly One minute back. One you know, I think they might do some good. I hope so too, Jeremy. How much are you being paid by them, then? Oh, shut the fuck up. The great boys thought absolutely fucking fine, I tell you. Whoa, 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 whoa. How's it going, actually? Fuck it, I don't care. I ain't the fucking news. Oh, bloody hell, I love this tune, though. All right, mate, see you later. Bye. Wait, what? Because they're on the on the. I was like, why am I bleeping this? But then it's because it's this. They were swearing afterwards. I'm just saying, would you like to? 
little shit you will. She's good, you know she is. Ten seconds, everybody. Interview. Oh. Five, four, three. Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already talked about the interview. solutions to it to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Can you hear yes, me, Gregory? I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. <laughs> no, I'm uh, getting this. enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. Greg. We need more support from ministers. We need more support from ministers. What are you doing? We need change at a structural level, I'm Jeremy. leaving, Greg. Look at the time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. Is, Just hang on. Just hang on. No, the, the problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. <laughs> well, uh, the affairs of the Justice <laughs> Department that we should be concerned about... Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Jones. We need. Uh, Can I have the ten seconds on there? Yeah. To relieve the pressure on our public. Sorry servant. to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving? Yes, I totally understand. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there, Gregory Judge. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Next, I'm joined by Police Chief Constable Bob Peel. I can't wait to hear them. With a very different perspective on our nation's crime. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days when you could safely walk the streets of your community. <laughs> this is Ben's kind of type of game, messy. Oh, yes. Enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife. Or cop. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy. But I think it all comes down to moral decay. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. And to what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. <laughs> it's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... Oh, bugger, hang on a moment. What? Jeremy, a bloody gimps escaped. Oh. Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? Uh, I didn't believe him. As I was saying, uh, Jesus didn't believe him. <laughs> and just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible <laughs> for the moral oh, decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Uh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. I'm sorry, darling. I was spaying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back in the box? Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Yeah, but back in your gimmick space. And whose responsibility is it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people of this. Oh, hold on just a moment. Oh my god, this is getting trickier. Uh, Clive, I am not having this again. <laughs> As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal, no one else. Look, everyone has a sob story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. Bob Peel there, really locking down the police's position on morality points. Things are moving now. And finally, tonight, <laughs> it's, it's uninterrupted. It's time to get to the heart of the matter. It's time to get to the Tony Dawson has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated assault, burglary, and menacing a swap. <laughs> He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Many happy returns, Tony. Many happy returns. Cheers, Jez. Call me Titwank, Tony. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Does. Can you <laughs> tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? Titwank, like Tony. Tony. Hey! Prison's a mixed bag. Structure's quite nice, but... It's a constant battle against institutionalization, as you can imagine. Yeah, Clive. And obviously, tit wanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. I'm picking up 
Tick wank time. Yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise yeah, party. Sorry, <laughs> Good bunch of lads. Okay, well, we're trying to get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Oh my god, right? Tick wank Tony! <laughs> I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. Big Chris, little Chris, and Vampire Chris. Oh. <laughs> One sec, love. Tip on the news. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just set up for it, you know? It's inherently unjust. Inherently unjust. So, do you feel tempted to... <laughs> I'm sorry, who's this now? You are joking. Chrissy Free Bollocks has only got Mr. Fancy, oh. It's only got Mr. Fancy. Not now, fellas, I'm on the news. It, se it seems like we've caught you at a bad time. God, it's fine. I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Yes, we uh, seem to be losing the signal no there, Tony. fucking way, Las Bolitas! Well, we're just trying to get that signal back. I think we... Yes, Tony? Tony, I mean, we're literally away for two seconds. <laughs> How has this happened, Tony? Can you hear me? Well, we seem to have lost our train of thought, though, Ethan. Hopefully you, the understanding of the serious and complex issues around... Oh, did you know? Like, you're trying to Snapchat, are oh, you're going to... Well, Ash will be there. Live with some plucky young thespians. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back, everybody. That went well. This... It's been a great I night. In this next section, there's a bit of music. If you edit in time with the music, you can see the result on the vision mixer. What's and a the public will love that. Don't worry if you don't know. You won't get punished for it or nothing. Just try and stay in the groove. Also, one last tip. When the music starts, turn down the broadcast volume. Right, enjoy the music bit. God, I love music. God, I'm so pissed. I think I might go and throw up in a bit. <laughs> Right, I've got this. Come on, it's welcome back. How hard can it be? This is a new. Ten seconds, everybody. We're gonna open on Megan. Camera two. Going in five, four, three. Welcomes Black. I'm Megan Wolf. And on tonight's Culture Spot, I'll be chatting with one of the first beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sixth Form College who today received a grant from Advance to take their play, Hey, Friendship, on a tour of local secondary schools. Welcome to you all. Well, let's start with you two, Harriet and Charlotte Winstanley-Hamilton. Girls, you must be thrilled. We are, Megan. We're overwhelmed, to be honest. And I believe you two are sisters, is that right? Yes, Charlotte's my oldest. I'm the older, more popular one. <laughs> I'm joking. Harriet and Trey were really the ones who came up with the whole idea. Very well. Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria, and I said, it's hey, Wobby. let's actually do something. So I went to look for a drama teacher. But she'd been laid off due to budget cuts. Fortunately, I directed a pantomime when I was at university, so, so I knew... That's the Wobby on there, isn't it? Right, yes, but you're the maths teacher, aren't you? Yes, that's me, Jeff Algebra. Maths teacher. Yeah. Maths is really important. Oh, thanks, Steve. Oh. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. <laughs> There's John. <laughs> it's one of the oldest art forms in history. Aristotle I just it. think that when we travel around all these problem schools and the poor kids see us, they say, hey, I really want to be like those attractive kids. And that's a very beautiful and powerful thing. We touch our audiences and they touch us right back. I suppose with a surname like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I, we often laugh about it. <laughs> Angela Algebra. Yes. <laughs> we just want Admin. to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. And teach people about the difficult <laughs> issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think we're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? Yes. That's right. Put into context. 
It's not Premier Alfred. Her character doesn't actually have a name, yeah, because in a way she's like all of us. It's like a metaphor. Maybe she's you at home, or like maybe she's you, Megan. Ultima, thank you so much for gifting that sub. Yes, thanks, Steve. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to have a little chat with your teacher. Look at John in the corner. Get ready. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> That's it. That way. <clears throat> oh, what? So, Jeff, when did you first hear about... Thank you so much, Baltimore. Two days ago, a letter from Advance arrived at the school. Now, the headmaster thought it was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from his bin and brought it to me. What are they how? doing? How did you react? I also threw it in the bin. <laughs> but then Harriet and Trey rescued it, and uh, they, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page. And next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. Do you know what? It's funny because Angela and I don't usually vote. We were not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic, mainly. 